Hi everyone, and thank you so much for your videos. I am um, looking forward to giving feedback on them. I do um, your questions are answered in another YouTube video, so that's there for you. And then we'll go through um, go through all of these one by one, and um, hopefully we could answer more questions. I know, Nora, you had some questions that I'll answer when I get to your video as well. So as we look, and I'll start with um, Terry and Juno. And Terry, I know that you had asked about specific videos, and there are some in the um, in the, the forum, so on stretching, and I'll get to it with plyometrics. Plyometrics is really a whole, I can't do it justice in this workshop. I will plan on another workshop just on plyometrics, but we'll uh, discuss that. So as we look, as you're stretching Juno, this looks great. So I do prefer to stand behind the dog just as you're doing and uh, work with that. So that looks perfect. As you're coming in for the forelimb stretch, so that left arm should be doing the extending and the right arm is just guiding. So this looks perfect. Many of you have asked about stretching um, and if you're getting resistance. And I added some more videos into the forum. When you get a little resistance we need to determine if this is pain tightness or just they're not very comfortable with it i always like to try to stretch three times if after three times the dog is still not relaxing then let it go try again later in the day or the next day but if this persists it's definitely worth looking into and we also want to compare side to side, so understanding what is normal. And so standing on this large unstable surface looks great. And having Juno hold, so we can see these large core muscles working here, which is all fantastic. And as Juno's working and looking just left to right we can see that shift and they're just looking to the left and then as you move over to the right we're getting a nice transfer of weight so this is great to work on both sides so this looks really good terry you know having juno and this is a nice unstable surface too sitting working again that nice tight sit so she is holding her limbs in really nicely there which looks fantastic so awesome on that with the plyometrics and the setup is terrific our goal is to bounce land and bounce up again and go through the jump so this does look nice and as i mentioned i'll continue to talk about plyometrics in another workshop this is something jump training that we really want to only work with about two to three times a week the body needs at least a 48 hour rest in between so you know looking at the jump height and the distance this is um, will be dependent upon each dog and what they're what they're doing so now we'll move to uh, Aaron and Mezzi here and um, Erin, so good job with this and the stretch. So looking down and to the left. And I love that you're using the spoon there to, to work with. And you can work with this, either straddle her if she's comfortable. Um, again, each dog will be a little bit different. As you're stretching that left forelimb forward, so that extension of your left arm. So she should come out nice and smooth. At no time should any of the remaining limbs be off the ground. So this is important with the dogs. We don't want to lift them at all. We wanna make sure that their three other legs stay on the ground. Otherwise, we're not really getting a good stretch. So looking good here. 
the unstable surface looks fantastic. So you really have two surfaces that she's standing on and this looks great, feeding her happy as can be. And the only thing I would slow down is when she looks left and right, maybe make it a little bit more purposeful. So maybe get that spoon back out and have her hold on each side, which would be fantastic. So we just get less of a quick movement. Her sit and then her, well, she's standing again, but her nice sit. So on that unstable surface, and you can probably even try with her turning that BOSU upside down too. That may be something, another unstable surface that she can work on. In this scenario, with the forelimbs up higher, we um, will get more weight onto the hind limbs. So great setup here. We can see how nice her top line is, and then we can work with her core as she sits and stands. And she's definitely our eager lab here with the activity going on. So this looks really great, Erin. Okay, our next, so this is um, Cheryl and Finian. And I'm just gonna back up here just a little bit. Um, so again, the stretch looks good. Uh, what I would probably adjust is have you take a couple steps backwards. So towards our hind uh, end or towards his, my apologies. So take a few steps. And um, this way we're getting a little bit more down and or flexion of the stretch. So take your feet, take maybe one step back towards his hips. That would be my adjustment here. Then moving. So what I want you to be careful of is the left hand around his neck. Be careful that you're not doing a choke hold here. Um, Sometimes, when, especially when we're learning stretching, we can get a little bit tight um, around the neck. So we don't want to do that with the dogs. So again, just lighten up a little bit on that left side. And then coming around with your right. And I love the love that you guys are giving each other. And great job with that um, forelimb coming forward. And I can see that he's definitely a little bit stiff there. So is that normal stiffness for him or is it a little bit of discomfort or is he unsure? So it could also be that you're holding on to his neck. Um, what I would suggest is definitely hold, um, you know, try to do this when you're not stressed about filming and he's not stressed and it could be in a relaxed atmosphere. And then see if uh, you can get more range of motion and compare. And we want to always compare left to right and what is, you know, the dog's norm. Working on the, the rocker board here is great. And what you can also do with him is he's leaning more towards the right side. You could move towards the left side to get more mobility there. You can also put um, a folded up towel on the right side of the board that'll help transfer him over a little bit. The setup looks great here. So as he's moving up and down, when he goes up this area, we're seeing a little bit more of the hind end activate. With this freeze frame here, we can see how nice his core is looking. He has a nice solid top line, which looks very nice there. Um, he, doing great with that. And um, so anytime we move up, we're going to work more on the hind limb. Coming down, we're going to work more on the forelimbs and get what's called eccentric control of the hind limbs also. So looking up and side to side is fantastic. And you could work with this too in your position uh, with it. His down looks fantastic here. And this is, he's making it look pretty easy. So I can tell he's done this before, but this is great core work to work on and what a nice facility you have there. And it's slowly coming down, looks perfect too. And then walking backwards, perfect. You're set up and walking back on the, the hall looks, looks great until he hits the, the surface. 
So awesome job with that. And we'll move to uh, Diane and Ridge. So just back you up here a little bit. So nice job standing on the platform. And with him looking down, this looks great too. And so you're in the position right behind him and this looks great. You could try like some others have used a spoonful of peanut butter or something like that as well. With you coming out, raising that left forelimb. So I'll just have you make sure with your left arm, you're cupping that elbow. So I'd actually ask you to bring your for your your arm back or your hand just a little bit onto his elbow this way he looks like he's shrugging a little bit so just alter your hand position here and um you know relax him there also just your right hand looks okay but let's make sure we don't have any choke hold on him here either and as i've mentioned we want to compare side to side what is his norm he looks a little bit tighter on the right side just as he's shifting there, but we'll compare that side to side and take a look at it. So good job with the setup here. Very eager here to, to get moving, um, Mr. Ridge. So as he's standing and as he's going through his positions, can see even though he's not holding a perfect um, stand right away, I normally don't get too crazy with how the dog is standing um, after an honest 10 to 14 days they should start getting a more stable stand so don't worry too much about that and that looks good with the wedge and the way he's sitting on the, the wedge so as he sits we're going to um, work on a tight sit here it's going to focus more on the abdominals and the hip flexors so I know for filming, um, you're over on the side a little bit, but standing right in front of him will be perfect when we're doing this without the video. Perfect, just you read my mind there. And we can see he's shifting just a bit over to the left um, and we can work on his position a little bit here. So, and you know, coming back into that nice tuck sit and the wedges are great to really work on this. Using the two discs looks great to work on sit to stand as well. And we can see all that core work going on there. And this really is a lot of work on the dogs and definitely tires them out. So this looks fantastic. Nice job there. So um, Nora, and I know Nora, um, you said you didn't have any equipment, which is absolutely fine. Don't worry about that at all um not a big deal uh most of the time you can do so much with what you have at home so i love how you said that you macgyvered things <laughs> so on the stretching what i will just make some changes here depending upon your comfort level it looks like you're using your right hand underneath to kind of pull that arm forward where your left arm if you could slide your hand down a little bit further and place it onto the elbow and guide him forward so um, hopefully that makes sense and same thing with the other side your right hand and when we're looking at the range of motion in the stretch we want to hold it a little bit more and we also just want to make sure we get a sustained stretch there so slow down the movements there and see what's going on and again, we'll compare side to side. So better with this one and a little bit more steady. And as he's comfortable, you can get used to what his norm is. And looking down and to the left. So what I would suggest here is, again, it may be just for the filming and the camera, but maybe stand to his left side so he looks down and more towards the left. With you in front of him, it's a little bit more difficult but you've got the right idea. Love the air mattress. These are great pieces of unstable equipment. And right away when he gets on, we can see that he increases his um, base of support in the rear, showing me that he's working uh, on his, um, you know, his balance and his core a little bit. Turning side to side looks great. 
So, and then down and we're mimicking those movements, those shifts in head posture or head position really challenge balance. And it's something that you can definitely do on your own. If you stand on one foot and look up and down and even close your eyes, you can see how much it affects your balance. This setup is great. Love the cushions here. And uh, my only suggestion would be just make sure that they're safe and that nothing could happen. Um, he looks like he's pretty comfortable there. So, and looking up and down, perfect. With the forelimbs up, we have more weight onto the hind end. And again, we can see that wider base of support there, but looking really good there. Um, and he, again, he has his top line nice and straight. I don't know what happened there. A little uh, disappeared on me. Um, but really good job there, Nora, with everything. I don't know if that was the end of your video or, but if not, just let me know. So we'll move on here to, um, excuse me, my voice, Courtney and Echo. So nice job with the cervical stretching. What I would suggest is let's get him a little bit more comfortable so we can see he's a little bit scrunched up there. So as he's scrunched up, he may, um, He's just not relaxed with his back and we can see how humped his back is. So maybe starting him more square or even putting him on a phthalate free yoga mat or something like that just to um, get him a little bit more square. And I would ask him to look down a little bit more as well. With the stretching, so great. So with that right arm, you're going to be reaching uh, forward with it. I'm just going to backtrack here a little bit so we can see. In real life, we'll hold it a little bit more and I'll also have you do more of a palm instead of grabbing it. So see your arms are wrapped around. I'll have you bring that uh, right hand up a little bit more and pretend that palm is more of a scoop and you're scooping forward. And so standing with the forelimbs up, this looks good. Just want to make sure that everything stays stable. And again, for videoing, I know you're on the side. My preference would be that you stand in front of him um, like you are here. Here, the position with the tight sit, looking good. So this really encourages him to hold a nice sit and um, does really well with that. Good job and the sit to stand so I would definitely um, stabilize um, his hind limbs more so this is a little bit too wobbly for um, my taste we just want to make sure that we don't uh, cause an injury or anything like that but the sit to stand here the setup is good and again standing in front of him may be a little bit easier to hold on you know to help him just stabilize himself so just a few things to to work on there but um nice nice job courtney with him and then certainly uh last but not least will um we have uh, probably vanessa butchering his name hopefully shaku shaku um so working on with him standing here looks great. So love the platforms here. And if we want him to look down more, you know, if we want to encourage that stretch, I'll just have you step over to a side. I think you're doing a little bit more with um, weight shifting, which looks good. Just the simple side to side and looking. He's doing great with this. And we you could always look from either head on or to the, um, if you're behind them and you have them look left and right to see if there's any symmetry there. As we move to the forelimb stretch, so great. So your right arm is scooping up that right forelimb and moving forward. And we wanna make sure that you're not doing any choke hold with that 
that left arm. So sometimes, again, as I mentioned, as we're learning, we may tighten our grip there. So we just want to be careful with that. And here, so he looks a little bit tighter on the left forelimb. You always want to compare side to side and understand what his normal is. So your left hand position looks good and your right position, uh, your right arm looks good also. We just want to be careful, no, no choke hold here. <laughs> and forelimbs up. So if you can, I'd find something just a little bit lower. There's a little bit of uh, hyperextension in his lower back and he's coming up onto his toes. So this is much better for forelimbs up on the step. Um, it's just, we look at his top line and it's much better. Love the couch cushions. I think the, this is like an awesome piece of fitness equipment or pieces of foot fitness equipment. So that unstable surface, and we could see him just looking up that his top line or his upper back, we can see the ripple there. So the muscles are contracting and something as simple as this is so important. And then looking left and right. So doing this just a few times a day would be fantastic for him. Something simple to work on. And then moving into those sit and stands look great. Awesome job there, Vanessa. And then Erin, I know you had asked about the floors and I didn't get that into the question um, portion, but working on the slippery floors and definitely when you're competing, there's some surfaces that are going to be not as forgiving and we don't want the dogs to slip. So um, sometimes you can use the, the spray onto the feet to prevent from slipping. Um, the stronger your dog's core is, the better their balance, the better proprioception, the easier it's going to be on them. Um, so, but thank you so much, everyone. And if anyone has any questions, my contact is in the forums. And thank you for joining me for, with this workshop.